everyone. It's George Kroos with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And uh, we're going into the Labor Day weekend in Canada right now. And I think it's the same in uh, all over North America. And watching schools get ready, some of them are already uh, fully into school, into the school year. And it's been great to work with uh, so many incredible educators who are doing just amazing things to make sure their their kids are safe, their colleagues are safe, and they're going to have an incredible year. And one thing I always think about is no matter what, kids are going to look back on this school year. And it's going to be one they always remember. And what I've watched from educators all over the world, and what's really been amazing is they are doing everything to ensure that when kids look back on this year, they're going to look back on it in a positive light with all the obstacles in their way. And so first of all, just thank you. Thank you for doing that. And uh, I, I know that it, there's a lot of uncertainty and I've talked about that quite a bit. And I know everyone is, to be honest with you. And I, I actually had the uh, opportunity to work with uh, Cuba Rushford School District um, it's near the border of Canada and New York State and did a virtual workshop with them. And one of the things that I really appreciate is the opportunity to <laughs> sit and just kind of watch and see what different districts do. And one of the things that I was really impressed what, with was uh, they did a Padlet and uh, I'll link to Padlet in the, in the description here. It was like a really cool thing that they had done. They just actually asked their, their staff to share some of the things they were concerned about and asked them to share some vulnerability. And uh, their superintendent, Carlos, uh, shared some of the things he was concerned about and what he was worried about during that time. And I think to ignore that was is not a good practice. And I think people needed to be heard about what they were worried about and what they could just have that time to listen. But then they also talked about what opportunities are they looking to create this year and, and, and having that. And I think sometimes we have to really address the reality of what's going on in our own lives and uh, the lives of the people we serve, but how are we going to make things better and looking for those solutions and just that opportunity to like, just, hear and read what uh, educators were sharing about some of the things they were concerned about, I felt was actually really empowering and it was a really powerful process. And so um, that, that was, I was glad to be there for that and see some of those things and, and then to watch them say like, we understand that and we have to address these things, but also what can we create to be better? And this, this school year probably, uh, and I joked with them, uh, cause I worked, talked to a new teacher that day and I said, everyone's a new teacher this year, like everybody and thinking about like going into the school year. And I know many of you listening to this are already well in your way, but I, I just, sometimes I like Google my own stuff to see like, what was I talking about a couple of years ago at this time? And I actually um, found this blog post talking about three reminders for the beginning of the year. And what I have done is I actually went through the post and I took some of those things. I think a lot of the things actually still apply, but put them into thinking about the 2020 school year and what that could look like and, and how we can share. And I started off the original post with a Jim Valvano speech. And if you don't know who Jim Valvano is, he probably for me is easily my favorite, um, speaker of all time. He was the head coach of NC State, probably gave my favorite speech ever, which was at the ESPYs. Uh, he had passed away with cancer maybe a few weeks after. And he said something that I really try to live my life by. And he talked about the importance that every day we should laugh, cry, and think. And one of the things that I've noticed about educators is that with all like crying that one's easy <laughs> we got the crying down right now i've got the crying down uh you, you know where we're brought to emotion and tears and um i noticed that you know even like sentimental things that are uplifting i cry about and just kind of think about that but 
Um, obviously in education, we think all the time. And what I've seen with a lot of educators is taking that time to connect even through isolation, watching them do Zoom happy hours where they're just using these spaces not to focus on what they're going to do in school and the upcoming school year, but just to be around each other. And I think it's really important more so now than ever to just find those moments and find those times to just appreciate and be with others where it's just about being with other human beings. It's not about, okay, what's the plan? What's this, whatever, because we'll, we'll get to that, that, that stuff will always, you know, happen, but just really thinking about every fleeting moment that we have and how life is so precious and just taking that time to enjoy one another. And when I watched many of the staffs I've worked with, I felt this, deeper appreciation that we have for one another that we might have taken for granted in the past and how much it was great to see other people. And I always watch, you know, teachers are really excited, hugging each other first day of school, but it just, it felt just more powerful. And maybe, maybe it was just me. Maybe it was just me seeing that and reading it in a certain way, but it, it was really powerful to watch. So I, I love that advice. Um, the idea to, laugh, cry, and think every day and try to make sure that you find that time to do it. And like I said, the crying, <laughs> the crying is, seems pretty easy. So I'm going to just kind of talk about uh, these three things uh, that I shared in 2018 and just kind of thinking about, you know, how do they still apply? Do they still apply to this year? And so the first one I shared is that for some students, school is their happy place and they miss their happy place. And if we're being honest, um, I think, for educators, some that, that is their, that they find a lot of purpose in that space. I know um, for a long part of my life, school was um, really where I found a lot of my purpose and a lot of my passion. And I think it, it helped shape who I am. And it's, it's not just the experience of school, it's the connection that we have with one another. I think about when I was a student, um, having the opportunity to see my friends, to you know, be in these classrooms and, and laugh with teachers and joke around, people that I really looked up to, my coaches. Uh, it's really cool. Calvin Hobbs, he was my football coach in grade 12 and I still connect with him to this day. And I, I remember like never, like I don't remember ever seeing that guy when he was a teacher and I still call him Coach Hobbs to this day. I can't call him anything else. And I remember just seeing him in the hallway and every every moment I remember seeing him, I just laugh and we joke around and he just, he's had a huge impact on me. And I'm not saying that kids are, you know, like a lot of kids are miserable and school is the only place where they find happiness. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that a lot of kids um, really see excitement in those uh, spaces. They get to have this time with, you know, their teachers. I, I, I know that this has happened to me and it's happened to other, you know, to me as both a student and a teacher. When a teacher leaves, kids that are graduating are upset because they're, they're sad that teacher left because that's kind of like, that's how they remember that school. They remember that teacher being there. And so it is a place where kids uh, have a lot of joy and sometimes they don't even notice it. And then sometimes they don't realize it. And I think a lot of kids have realized it. And when I was actually with the, the Cuba group, they had students sharing and talking about how excited they were to come back. And they actually shared how excited they were when the pandemic first happened and school is basically closed. And then basically within one day, they're like, oh, this kind of sucks. And then they started to realize how much they appreciated school and how valuable that what that is. And I think it's a reminder of the incredible job educators do every day to create these spaces that not only push thinking, but where people feel very comfortable and welcome and appreciated and challenged and, and all of those things that, you know, make us human. So it's, it's just a reminder of that school should be a joyous place and how much kids and educators appreciate it and how much we look back fondly on those times for many of us. And um, I, I think that to me is, is something that's really, really important. Um, the second one 
is that no matter how happy or sad your colleagues or students seem, don't hesitate to share a kind word or action. When I shared this in 2018, it's a simple tweet. I said, you never know what anyone is going through. So if you think of something nice about a person, say it. Don't ever let an opportunity pass to make someone's day. And a lot of times when there's tragedy and we see things um, that we're shocked by, we're like, oh, that person seems so happy. And um, a lot of times we're fighting battles and nobody knows about it. And for me, I, I, I try my best that if I think of something kind to say, like if something pops in my head, I make sure that person knows it. I make sure that per- I don't care if like, oh, you know what? They're good. They're always happy. They don't need, they don't need the extra for me. Um, you know, people say things like, oh, you, you probably get compliments all the time. And, or not to me, but you know, I've, I've heard that said to others, obviously. And we just assume people are good, right? That they, they've got enough. They've got enough love. But I think for me, a lot of times I look back and think about hey like i wish i could have said this in that moment and and i wish i could have shared that to this person that is no longer here and how important that is and i think this is um for me a personal sense because and i've talked about this a lot my my father passed away about uh, eight years ago and the last thing that i said to my dad was i love you and i had no idea he was going to pass away he had a sudden heart attack and uh died in a sleep one afternoon, uh, taking a nap. And I'm really grateful that I, that's how it was the last thing I said to my father, not knowing that, um, he'd be, he'd, uh, be no longer with us. So I just think it is always the best and safest bet to share those kind of words. And I'm not talking about just throw in fake compliments at people and just, you know, filling them up with garbage. I'm talking about like genuine things that come to our head that sometimes we don't say because we maybe we feel it makes us less or makes us feel insecure. And there obviously we see people struggling, we, we step in, but sometimes we don't see struggle and we just let it be. And that is always a missed opportunity, especially if you have those genuine, authentic things. And and don't save this um, just for your colleagues. It's for your students too. And also a remember, reminder that you can say these things to your administrators, if you're a teacher, your, and vice versa. I think a lot of times we expect like a hey, superintendents and administrators like, they just, this is part of their job, just getting horrible stuff thrown their way and they just have to deal with it. And I'll tell you, they're human. They're, they, they deal with a lot of things. They want the same things that we all want is to create the best opportunities for our staff and students. And maybe you don't agree with some of the things that they do, but if you do, if, if there's things that you see that are really good, always highlight them because I think it, it, it gives us confidence to continue on and, and try to be better. But I think everyone needs to be acknowledged no matter what your position is. So never lose that opportunity to say something kind when it comes to your mind. And then the last one is to give everyone a new beginning. And when we talk about this, this is something that's by default always true in education with how we talk about our kids. You know, a kid has a bad day and we don't hold that against them. The next day they start from new. And we want to give them that fresh start every single day. And that's great advice. And I think it's something as educators, it's really important. And it's the same thing. I think we don't talk about this as much um, either is we need to do the same thing for our colleagues that how do our colleagues want to grow? A lot of people that um, send send me emails, ask for help. They feel that they're almost pigeonholed to certain positions that they can't maybe uh, get a different position within their organization because they're actually focused the the people that make those decisions are focusing on what they were the last um, their first three years versus the last three and we have to be able to see people can grow this is what we expect of our students and do we highlight and recognize that of our colleagues as well that they're trying to get better and that new beginning um, is something that's really powerful. And 
I think sometimes what we can do is it's nice sometimes we get a new superintendent and people are terrified of change. People are terrified of like, what's this person gonna do? But you could also see it as like, hey, look, I have a blank slate with a new boss, with a new administrator. What am I going to create this year? And if you are going into a new position, into a new school or district, that is also true. You're starting from zero and thinking about like, what can you create this year? And I remember uh, when I switched jobs uh, from one school district to the other, I remember saying how I wanted this, I wanted to create something different than what I created before. And I, I really wanted to grow in that process and it really changed a lot for me. And so I think we have to do that for our students, we have to do it for our colleagues, but also we have to do it for ourselves. And sometimes when we're having like a rough day, sometimes when things are not going our way, I, I will tell you in the last few months, I've had some seven, 8 p.m nights I'm going to bed and that's pretty early for me because I'm like this day sucked this is terrible I don't want this anymore and I'm like I'm just I'm gonna go to bed wake up start new and what I'm trying to get better at is not letting the failures of yesterday determine the the path of today and not holding on to that and I'll tell you I'm like straight up I'm, I'm not perfect at this. I'm not saying, I, I, I hate when people just pretend like, hey, this is all you gotta do and figure this out. And, and that, that's, that's not reality. Uh, I struggle with this too, but I'm getting better because I'm putting in the forefront is that, hey, look, I just, I need a reset tomorrow. Uh, today didn't work out the way I wanted to do. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of a break, uh, do something else, go to sleep early, whatever. But tomorrow is a new day. And the same grace that we say is important to give to our students is just as essential to give to ourselves. And I think those three things are just things that I think are relevant this year, even though they might context might change a little bit. But I think at any point in the year, if you think about those three things, and I'll just share them one again, is just remember that school for many people is their happy place. And so um, let's, let's keep that true. Uh, the second one is no matter how sad or happy your colleagues seem, never hesitate to share a kind word. And then the last one is give everyone a new beginning. And so hopefully um, these ideas have helped you not only to connect with your students and with your staff, but to really kind of connect with yourself. I hope you have an incredible day. I hope you have an incredible week. Thank you as always for taking the time to listen. Uh, I hope, I thank you for all you do. Take care.